This video is sponsored by Incogni. If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk and I do not accept the responsibility. Make sure you press the follow button on my Instagram as if you were my ex pushing my buttons. Hi, I am very ugly, but you should enjoy the movie anyway. Not at all, boy! <laughs> Pyridine, one of nature's most foul-smelling chemicals. To me, it kind of smells like some stank cooch that you found on the beach. Now, pyridine is highly flammable, weakly alkaline, water miscible, and it has that unpleasant fish-like smell. Pyridine is quite useful, and it's used in a lot of reactions. One is the hydrogenation of pyridine, which goes into piperidine. Another one is an elimination reaction, which pyridine goes into pyridinium? What the f- It was also used as a bittering agent until the USA decided to ban it. It may still be added to ethanol, but that's kind of a wild thing to do. I guess that's why they did it, so we wouldn't drink it. F***ing losers. To start, we're going to add 46.8 grams of niacin, and we're going to put that into our flask. I would have had 50 grams if my recoline HBR synthesis worked, but it never did. I was going to make a joke about this looking like cocaine, but the last time I did that, I got flamed by every single commenter, saying it doesn't look like cocaine. I have seen cocaine in real life, and to me, it looked like cocaine. For this reaction, we do need a catalyst, and that's going to be basic copper carbonate. I did have to make this myself, as I didn't want to pocket the expense for it, and I did what we all do, and we watched Nile Red. Now, we do have to make sure this is thoroughly mixed, so all I did was just shake the glass around, and it mixed up pretty well. I did drop a stir bar into the reaction flask, but it ended up proving not to do anything. More useless than a lifeguard for all the Olympic swimming events. I decided to use a short path distillation head, as it was less pieces of glassware that I had to clean. I hate cleaning glassware with a passion. I also added a 100ml receiving flask, and that's pretty much it. I started with a low heat, as we don't want to increase the heat too much, as it could burn the niacin. Speaking about being burned, I've been getting paranoid about my information being leaked ever since I started YouTube, and it's been driving me crazy ever since. That's where my sponsor, Incogni, comes in. Every year, both the number and scope of data breaches worldwide are rising. In a nutshell, your personal information is being sold or published online without you even knowing about it. I also get a ton of spam coming to my mailbox, and I'm at my wit's end. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal, and deals with any objections from their side. This really helps to protect myself from data companies having access to my name, email address, social security number, home address, and more. People search sites publish your personal information, including details about family members, for anyone to look up online. Since I've started YouTube, I've always been kind of nervous of people trying to find me or do anything to my family that I don't want them to do. In one case, a child advocacy worker's own children were found listed on a data broker site as their associates. Creating an account is easy. Just tell Incogni whose personal data they'll be removing, grant them the right to work for you, and now you can just kick back and let them do it. Incogni even has a deal going on right now, and the first 100 people who use the code word Kimdelic We'll get 60% off of Incogni services. The link is in the description. Either don't be protected or use Incogni and be protected. After a short time of heating, you can see this white vapor in the flask. Something is definitely happening. Here's how useless the stir bar is. Upon further heating, we can see these tiny little droplets of condensation on the outside of the flask. This is a very good sign that the reaction is working. It slowly started to creep its way up the distillation head, and I was personally getting excited. But like a stable excitement, not, not like a batch crazy excitement. I just can't get over how useless this stir bar is. I will literally roast the shit out of it every chance I get. I also want to mention how blue the powder has gotten inside the flask. I also wrapped the entire reaction flask with some aluminum foil. So just in case it failed, I didn't have to see it. As the reaction progressed, more and more smoke and a lot of pyridine started to condense in the condenser. The receiving flask also had a bunch of vapor inside of it. A fume hood or well-ventilated area is highly recommended as this smells terrible. A good suggestion is to do this in your neighbor's yard. For legal purposes, that was a joke. Finally, we have the first drop of pyridine coming into the receiving flask. I did get a whiff of it as it was coming over, and let's just say... It does have an unpleasant fish smell. 
I'm not entirely sure what the reaction mechanism is, but I do know that niacin goes through a decarboxylation and we get our pyridine out of it. Though we do need a catalyst and that's where the copper carbonate comes in. I mean, we also need to heat it up, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Inside the reaction flask, you can see that the niacin coats the copper carbonate kind of like snowfall. Almost like a skier is about to go over a hill. The reaction will essentially be over when no more pyridine is coming over, and everything in the reaction flask kind of looks like a tar pit. The rate at which the pyridine dropped was slowed, and I had to increase the heating. We can also see that tar junk at the bottom, which I mentioned previously. The pyridine that comes over is not pure in any way, and there's an impurity that makes the solution look yellow. I say solution as there's likely some water in there and some impurities. When no more pyridine was coming over, I knew that I was done and I could essentially go on to the next step. We now have to take the water out of it and set it for another distillation. To the flask, I added a stir bar and I'm gonna add one gram of sodium hydroxide. This will react with any niacin that's in there and it will make an insoluble salt. The sodium hydroxide will also help to dry the pyridine. I let it stir for a while, however, no insoluble salt came out and it was pretty much set to go for distillation. This is our tar pit looking reaction flask and it looks pretty terrible. I am not going to be happy to clean this. Before I set up for another distillation, I actually added two more grams of sodium hydroxide. I really wanted to see if anything would react if I added more, but nothing ever did. And the additional two gram addition will help with drying. I then set up for a simple distillation with some molecular sieves in the receiving flask. This way I could just dry everything as it comes over and it would just make my life a lot easier. Again, I wrapped everything in aluminum foil and I waited for it to boil. The pea looking solution started to boil and our pyridine started to come over. The pyridine started coming over around 93 to 95 degrees Celsius as there was an azeotrope with water. It did eventually get up to its boiling point, but the first fraction did have a little bit of water. You don't have to put molecular sieves into your receiving flask, but I just found it to be easier. Once an insane amount of vapor started being produced, I stopped the distillation. Most of the pyridine was gone, and we just had this junk at the bottom. In case you don't know what a molecular sieve is, it's a material with pores of uniform size. The 3A sieves that I have selectively pull water out, but they won't pull the pyridine out. This makes it useful for drying a variety of solvents like ethanol and a lot of other ones. My yield came out to be about 21 milliliters, and this equates to a percent yield of 68.3. All I did was filter the pyridine through a coffee filter and I measured in a graduated cylinder. I stored the pyridine in an amber glass vial with some fresh molecular sieves at the bottom. I actually need the pyridine for a future video, but I really don't want to give the surprise away. You can also turn this into pyridine HCl by pouring the pyridine into ether and bubbling HCl gas into it. It is extremely hygroscopic, so it's really not easy to store. Well, this is the end of the video, so I'm probably going to go touch myself and go to sleep. Huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters, you guys are the MVPs, and I really cannot thank you enough for all of your support.